As the 2021-22 school year comes to a close, also means the end of a, a basketball era, that being Jordan Johnson, one of the best ever put on a Falcon uniform. He's kind enough to join us as we recap and look back at his time as a Falcon, but also his life in basketball, which hopefully will continue beyond these walls. My name is Matt Mendel, and Jordan, thanks for your time. You look back at, at your life in basketball. When did you start playing? Why did you start playing the sport? Um, I started playing back in fourth grade. Actually, my best friend at the time, he introduced me to the sport. So before then, um, I was actually a swimmer. I started off as a swimmer. So when I was inter introduced to basketball, it kind of started off as a friendship, and then kind of built from there. When did you start to realize that, hey, I'm pretty good at this game? Um, Probably middle school. I started really getting a lot better. Um, throughout middle school, though, I didn't really grow much, so I was more <laughs> skilled, but... Um, Going up against bigger guys made me better. So, You eventually went to Cedarburg High School, had uh, some great teams there, including a, a squad that finished as a runner for the WIAA State Championship. How did your game evolve at the prep level? Um, in high school, um, I, w I started off at 5'6", my freshman year of high school, so I was a point guard. And um, playing against schools like Germantown, who had like five Division One players, <laughs> um, that really just helped develop my game. Um, especially my ball handling and shooting. So by the time I was a senior and I was 6'5", I believe, um, when my size caught up to my skill, it really just helped elevate my game. And I, I know you had a lot of success at the prep level with that three-point shot. Was that always a big part of the game, or did that start to develop in high school? Um, that was always a big part of my game growing up was my three-point shooting. Um, yeah, especially in high school when I was – like a buck sixty and six five, uh, can't really drive to the basket. So, uh, shooting threes was definitely my specialty. And obviously, it worked. Fourteen hundred points back in your prep days. Your memories overall, when you look back at your time as a bulldog, what stands out? Um, playing with my best friends, honestly. Um, my best friends growing up played with me through elementary, middle school, and high school. So, uh, playing with those guys and. Uh, making a state run for sure. So once your days wrapped up at Cedarburg High School, what made Concordia your top choice as far as college basketball? Um, honestly, Coach Cassidy and knowing him my whole life. Um, I grew up on Concordia basketball growing up, so middle school, high school, I went to pretty much every home game. So when the recruiting process started, um, I was willing to turn down some scholarships to come here. So, And you're number one. What was your biggest adjustment that you had to make at this level? Um, athleticism and my size. I came in at 165, um, and I got to 205 by my last season. So definitely strength and athleticism. Those that know you know that, that you're a gym rat. I mean, you're in that gym, you know, all hours when you can be, and you're putting the work in, the practice, getting shots up. Has it always been something that you've done to that – you know, work ethic start to really take over here. When did that begin? Um, at a young age, my parents kind of put that into me. Um, they always taught me, like, hard work and perseverance is going to make me successful. So I knew as long as I outworked everyone on the team and everyone in the conference, I was going to be successful. So that was always my goal. <laughs> you know, I asked you, you know, at Cedarburg High School, how did your, your game evolve and how did it develop at that level? How about here at Concordia and your time as a Falcon from start to now finish? How do you feel like your game evolved or grew in that time? Definitely being able to score at all three levels. I came in as mostly a three-point shooter. So when I came here, I wanted to be able to drive it to the basket, score in the mid-range and from three. So definitely scoring at all three levels was a big part of my change as a player. One of the ways you've, you've been able to score at a great clip is free throw shooting. And when you look at free throw percentages and, and records, uh, you're among the, the leaders in a number of categories for Falcon men's basketball. For you, and you see at the pro level too, some guys psych themselves out. Some are great scorers but just cannot master the free throw. What was always key for you? How, how have you been able to master free throw shooting? It's definitely mental. It's definitely a mental part of the game. Um, so just working on mindfulness, uh, like off the court, that was a big part of my free throw shooting. You go back to 2019, and you were the Concordia Invitational Tournament MVP. I bring it up as we talk about some of your memories, some of the highlights. CIT, obviously a big date, big weekend on the Concordia basketball calendar. Unfortunately, 
last couple of years, no CIT thanks to the pandemic. But but what was CIT? How much fun was it to be part of something like that with the atmosphere, what it was, and just the bragging rights among the, the four Concordia schools? Yeah, that's definitely one of the best experiences being at a Concordia school. So being able to play in front of your fans and the opposing fans in a, either a hostile environment on the road or a, um, always when it's at Concordia, we fill it up. So it's always a great time. But uh, bragging rights was huge after winning my sophomore year. So that was a great time. <laughs> I know we've talked about this quite a bit, and you get asked about this often, but 2020, the, the program record is among a number of different records, whether it be conference or Concordia-related, but the 45 points showing the NAC tournament, the semifinal victory at Wisconsin Lutheran, your recollection of that game? Uh, definitely a different type of zone, for sure. Um, I've only been in the zone like that a few times, so um, definitely one of my favorite experiences playing, obviously. Um, but yeah, it was a huge win to get us into uh, the championship game here against MSOE and then eventually onto the tournament. So There was a stretch in that Wisconsin Lutheran game where, you, I mean, again, you literally took over and everything you threw up there is like the NBA Jam video game. You were on fire, the golden ball, everything was was splashing in. Did it feel like that out there that like you, you just couldn't miss? Like, as you mentioned, you were in that zone. Did it just feel like, man, I'm, I'm really on today. Like, I'm, I'm going to just r- continue to ride this wave. Yeah, when I when you get in a zone like that, it kind of just feels like anything you put up is going in. So, um, yeah, honestly, any shot, I just knew I needed to create space and it would go in. You know, that same year, you you touched on it. After the win at Wisconsin, Lutheran, thanks to another upset, the, the NAC Tournament Championship that year was inside the John Book Fieldhouse, an overtime victory against MSOE. What was the feeling? How, how did it feel? What was the excitement of cutting down the net? going to the NCAA tournament, winning that championship game, but also doing it here in front of a packed house, one of the best atmospheres maybe ever here at the John Book Fieldhouse. Yeah, that was an amazing experience. I think it was like over 2,000 people mm-hmm. in here. So um, it was really a dream, honestly. Um, obviously growing up watching Cordy basketball and being able to go to the NCAA tournament, winning here, uh, taking down the net in front of the fans was an amazing experience. With the crowd noise, being what it was, what was it? Was it difficult to hear it all? Was it difficult to communicate during that game? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you could barely hear your own voice. So. <laughs> you look at 2020-21, and we didn't know after that that MSOE victory and then the, the NCAA tournament game at UW-Platteville that, that COVID would become a thing. How much different was that 2020-21 COVID season just trying to get back to some normality? It was honestly terrible. Um, <laughs> uh just not knowing when you could play or practice did something to you mentally. Um, it impacted our season in terms of our record. And um, just, I don't know, it's just not the same, not being able to be around each other as much. Heard a number of players when that season finally came to a close. I don't want to say relieved. That might be not the, the, the right word to use. But, but certainly, as you mentioned, just mentally fatigued, tired, you know, whether it be the number of testing to, as you mentioned, all the different guidelines that were put in place. Did you feel that way at all in the sense that when the season ended, you needed a break? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we practiced more than any other season, but we played way less than any other season. <laughs> and these practices were definitely, they're more individualized and not the big group. And then adding on top of that, you see all these D1 teams playing out their full schedules, and you're like, well, they're doing it, why can't we do mm-hmm. it? So it's definitely frustrating. One plus that came out of that 2021 portion was the fact you became the program's all-time leading scorer. Was that ever a goal coming in that, that maybe – did you have your sights set on, you know, if it aligns, I would like to try to go for that record? Um, yeah, so I watched Sarah Kittle, so who had the record before me growing up. So when I was going to Concordia, um, I remember telling my dad, I was like, I'm going for that record. It's going to be mine one day. And he's like, I don't know, that's a lot of points. So <laughs> – But, yeah, it's always a goal of mine for sure. (laughs) Do you remember the basket? Do you remember anything about when you became the all-time leading scorer? I knew that it was coming up, but I didn't know when. And then I think I, when we played WLC, I got exactly the right amount. And then against MSUE, I broke it. So So you knew as soon as it happened, essentially. Yeah, I was told after the game that I tied it. So (laughs) During the 2021-22 season, you surpassed 2,000 points. And, again, that's – Never been done here. 2,098 now. Your total as you leave the the steps here at Concordia. 
again, was that, you know, once you got the program record, was then 2000 something that you kind of aimed for, or did it just happen? Um, really just kind of happened. Um, especially this year going in, my main goal is to win. So it was more of a secondary goal for sure. We get to brag about you. I know you don't like to brag about yourself, but but we're going to do it anyways. A number of accolades have come your direction throughout your time as a, as a Falcon, rightfully so, including being an ACT Player of the Year and NABC All-Americans this past season alone. I know it's a team sport and you want to win, but as far as the awards go, the honors go, is there one or two that maybe stand out that you go, you know what, that's pretty special? Um, I would say academic All-American, definitely – I take great pride in my schoolwork, and to combine that with basketball, I think that's one of the best awards you can get in this sport. And uh, being an All-American and an, an ABC All-American, my goal coming into Concordia was to eventually become an All-American. So, When you talk about being an academic All-American, is that something that kind of came naturally, just juggling basketball and school, or did it take a little bit more of an effort here at this level? took a lot of effort, especially time management, um, you're away on away games some days. You miss some uh, classes. So definitely managing your time was huge for me. Of course, we bring up, you know, accolades. We bring up, you know, championship games you've been a part of, 45-point performance. You you obviously were able to produce against Wisconsin Lutheran. Is there one game, and it doesn't have to be those, is there one game that stand out among the rest from your career that you point at and go, that that is either a highlight or it certainly is one of the top memories I have as being a Falcon? I would say the MSOE game here for the championship um, for the obvious reason of making the yeah. NCAA tournament. And then my sophomore year, um, beating Ann Arbor at their place mm-hmm. to win the CIT championship was special. So, Of course, this year you're getting the opportunity again to, to host the NAC tournament championship. It certainly didn't go the way the Falcons were hoping. How would you describe the feeling, the emotion, essentially knowing that that was it? I mean, for you, and not that, you know, poo-poo the situation, but, but, but you wanted to win that championship. It didn't, it didn't work out. But how about just the feeling you had walking off the John Book Field court knowing that this was it. This is, that's it for my time as a Falcon. What, what, what were you thinking? I mean, first of all, you got to give Marion a lot of credit. I mean, mm-hmm. they just sh- shot lights out, and it just wasn't going for us that day. And honestly, they deserve to win the game, so there's really no regrets there. Um Leaving the field house, obviously a little sad, but honestly, uh, uh, in the back of my head, I knew I did everything I could, and I just left it all out there. So, You got a really neat experience. You had one back this past March, and getting the opportunity to play in the Reese's Division Three All-Star Game in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Tell us about that experience. It was an amazing experience. Um, getting to play against the top players in the country for my last game was special. Um, just... Everyone is in difficult shots, plays you don't see every day, so it was a good time. How did you find out that you were going to be part of that game? Um, I got a call from the NABC, so when I got that call, I was pretty excited. <laughs> As you kind of reflect, and I know it, it's 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 harder to do right now because you're still on the here at Concordia stage, but obviously your time as a Falcon has come to a close. How do you hope people remember you when they look back and, and, and look at the record book, when, when, whether they watch this interview, whether they watch highlights from, from the past number of years? What, what do you hope future Falcons or opponents or just fans say when they think of Jordan Johnson? Uh, my work ethic, for sure. Um, that's probably what I take some of my most pride in is how hard I work and um, just leaving it all out there and leaving, leaving here with no regrets that you gave this thing all you had. So what's next? Um, hopefully to play overseas this upcoming fall. So I signed with an agent three weeks ago, so we'll see what happens. All the best. Thanks for everything you've done here at Concordia. Thanks for your time. And, uh, again, we're, we're cheering for you as you hopefully get the opportunity to play overseas. Thank you. That is Jordan Johnson, among the best, if not the best, to ever play Falcon men's basketball.